Hello, this is Kenya Podcast Preacher, and I want to welcome you back to Deep Waters. This podcast is brought to you by Applied Strengths Ministry, where we believe working together in our strengths is the effect of working out the will and calling of God in our lives. The title of this message is Wisdom is Not Permanent Nor Guaranteed. This is a multi-episode series in which this is episode 404. The magnificence of God, he so desires relationship with us that he does everything he can do to bring it about. Look at verse 33. Oh, the depth of the riches of both the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. For who has known the mind of the Lord? Or who has become his counselor? Or who has first given to him, and it shall be repaid to him? For of him and through him and to him are all things, to whom be glory forever. Amen. Look now, Peter would agree with me regarding the fragility of or frailty of our salvation, a salvation that is necessary and almost as thin as air. 1 Peter 4.18 Now if the righteous one is scarcely saved, where will the ungodly and the sinner appear? Now I don't need to chat about these things to scare you into salvation. I leave that hellfire messaging to the likes of Jonathan Edwards. His message titled Sinners in the Hands of an Angry God was timely and extraordinarily effective. In fact, it started a revival. It was so powerful. That level or type of messaging is not what I'm called to do right now. And so I don't want to go beyond what God is saying to me. Do I want a revival to hit the nation like a nuclear bomb? Absolutely, yes. And I do expect to see it in my lifetime. You see, when King David has sinned, God made a profound statement that, had it been considered by David in advance of his sin, He could have avoided much pain and suffering in his life. It is for the statement that I try to work from in my relationship with God, since he favors no man. 2 Samuel 12, 8 I gave you your master's house and your master's wives into your keeping. I gave you the house of Israel and Judah. And if that had been too little, I would have given you much more. Now I know that there is so much more in that statement. And so, but I want you to think about this and then compare it to your relationship with God and to David's relationship with God. I know, I know, this is about the ever-fading wisdom of Solomon. And to that you would be correct. But this little detour is like finding two pearls of great price in one oyster. Now the following is a message translation by Eugene Peterson. 1 Chronicles 22, 14, 16. So now, son, God be with you. Godspeed as you build the sanctuary for your God, the job God has given you. And may God also give you discernment and understanding when he puts you in charge of Israel, so that you will rule in reverence, obedience under God's revelation. That's what will make you successful, following the directions and doing the things that God commanded Moses for Israel. Courage. Take charge. Don't be timid. Don't hold back. Look at this. I've gone to a lot of trouble to stockpile materials for the sanctuary of God. A hundred thousand talents. That's 3,775 tons of gold. A million talents of silver. That's 37,750 tons of silver. Tons of bronze and iron. Too much to weigh. And all this timber and stone. And you are free to add more and workers both plentiful and prepared, stonecutters, masons, carpenters, artisans in gold and silver, bronze and iron. You're all set. Get to work in Godspeed. 1 Chronicles 29, 3, 5. Then David the king addressed the congregation. My son Solomon was singled out and chosen by God to do this, but he's young and untested, and the work is huge. This is not a place for people to meet each other but a house for God to meet us. Now i got to break away from the scripture and point out that this is actually the description of the church. This is the purpose of the church. A house for God to meet us. That's why we don't invite the devil. Okay, back to the scripture. I've done my best to get everything together for building this house for my God. All the materials necessary. Gold, silver, bronze, iron, lumber, precious and very colored stones and building stones, vast stockpiles. 
Furthermore, because my heart is in this, in addition to and beyond what I have gathered, I'm turning over my own personal fortune of gold and silver for making this place of worship for my God. 3,000 talents of gold. That's about 113 tons. All from Oprah, the best. And 7,000 talents of silver for covering the walls of the building. That's about 214 tons of silver. And for the gold and silver work by craftsmen and artisans. And now how about you? Who among you is ready and willing to join in the giving? Okay, so but wait. God stated to King David, and that if it had been too little, I would have given you much more. And to that I would say, then how do I get to the relational stage with God that this would become a reality for me? I know this has to be continued in another message. Back to King Wisdom. What's the common denominator in this message? Serving other gods of which we are openly doing in America. But now think of this. King Solomon had 700 wives, princesses, and 300 concubines, and it was his wives that turned away his heart. Now, but wait, this is not about wives, but about this. He was married the whole time, and it wasn't until he was old that he gave up and walked away from God. 1 Kings 11.4 What I'm saying is that even though we allowed people from other countries into America, and they brought with them their false gods and worshipped them on American soil. It wasn't until King Solomon started to build the altars for them that he was in trouble with God. No, it didn't help that he had married so many unbelievers, and one could say that it was only a matter of time. You see, we have reconstructed the altar of Baal in New York City not so long ago. But wait, there is so much more that we have done to slowly steer ourselves away from the heart of God. But it is going after other gods that draws a line in the sand, in my opinion. Do you want to know what it's like to live in a godless, that is, the one true God, absent from American soil society? All we have to do is nothing. Most all of the wheels are turning that will set the stage for God's absence from this country. I said this earlier in the message, and that is that there is a time whereby God will focus on the Jews again. In our time, that is, the fullness of the Gentiles, will come. Can we not stay his hand for a minute? Is it too late? Have the false gods turned too many hearts away from God already? Is the love of many already growing cold? Matthew twenty four twelve. And because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. Can you not see that this is already happening? Luke eighteen eight. I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will he really find faith on earth? We couldn't believe that God had appointed Donald Trump for president, or that he could have handled COVID. Is faith already absent from earth? Look at what's coming. Matthew 24, 22. For then there will be great tribulation, such as not been since the beginning of the world until this time. No, nor ever shall be. And unless those days were shortened, no flesh would be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days will be shortened. The more we push God out of this country, the more of a reality this becomes. Worshiping other gods is like committing adultery with God. Oh, it is so much more than that. But I just wanted to use a relatable scenario. But yes, it's at least that bad. Well, Ken, what must we do? What can we do? We do what he, that is God, asked us to do. End of story. Second Chronicles 7.14 If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, and pray and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, and will forgive their sin and heal their land. Listen, the Old Testament shows us how to handle altars and false gods. Not all of the leaders and the kings responded properly, but some did. All you have to do is just read about someone who really loved God and believe that this stuff is real and that leaving God for the fake stuff really offends him. And I would go so far as to say it really hurts him after all that he has done for humanity. And this is what we do to him. This is what we are right now doing to him. I suspect we crucify him with our actions and deeds a thousand times a day. 
Well, that's it for today and for this series. Remember, it's not what you find wrong or disagree with regarding these messages, but what you can take away from them. Together, we can do more to impact the kingdom than if we work alone. Let's flip the script and kill, steal, and destroy the works of the enemy and create space for the light of life to shine through into people's lives. Plant a seed and click on the like and subscribe button. Let's build this ministry together. Thanks and see you next time in deep waters.